Olá pessoal, eu estou aqui com Marcos Colchester, é, ele está aqui participando do, do evento também e eu vou fazer algumas perguntas para ele. Uh, professor, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, please inter introduce yourself. Tell about uh, your history in, uh, in the academy. Okay. Well, my name is Marcus Colchester. I'm English, and um, I originally did a degree in zoology in Oxford University, and then I changed to become an anthropologist and spent many years living in the Amazon, actually on the Venezuelan side of the border with Brazil. Just over the border with the Northern Yanomami Army and my research was about the social ecology um, of, the, of, the, of the Northern Yanomami. Army. How do they live with nature but also how do they conceive of nature? How do they themselves understand their place in what we call uh, nature? So I was particularly interested in their own understanding of uh, how they manage their resources and make a living. Okay, and that's your your line, a research line today? That was my research line in the 80s. Okay. Uh, and then since then I've been an activist in human rights. Okay. And uh, that's, that's been my main work, has been to uh, achieve justice for people who have been marginalized by development and by uh, conservation. Sure. And talking about this concept, uh, Tell them the importance to to unite the the traditional human peoples to this concept of of protected areas. Yeah, well, protected areas is a very odd concept that's evolved initially in, in Europe and Asia um, as a way of taking a piece of of the environment and putting it aside. Um, originally it was for the interest of the king, for his hunting, sure. um, and then it was for the interest of the state, for securing strategic resources, uh, timber or for mining or for other purposes. And all those models were from the top down. They were excluding uh, people who lived from those resources um, and had their own knowledge and their own identity and their own history um, in relation to those resources. So I see the, the imposition of areas of protection as having a rather tragic history which is still having rather tragic uh, consequences, not just for those people, but for the whole way we are trying to achieve sustainability. We are trying to achieve sustainability with injustice rather than to secure justice. So we kind of got it wrong, the wrong way around. And uh, luckily, you know, through the advocacy we've been doing over the last 20, 25 years, uh, not just us, but uh, many pe people, um, there's been a rethink. I think there is a new paradigm now where we realize that conservation has to be done with the people, not against the people. Um, and for me, for me, that was the interesting thing we were puzzling through in our discussion today. We were, we were thinking about, well, can we reconcile these interests of development, of the private sector, of the role of the state, but what then is the place of society, of the people, of the community? And, and we have to consider that. We have to consider that, but we were kind of going around the edges of this concept of sustainability without really challenging ourselves about the politics. Okay. Where do we reallocate power so that people have a stronger voice in these decisions. We were, today I was not satisfied because we were really um, apolitical. We were trying not to talk about politics. I wanted us to talk about politics and I think we have to be brave. And um, some of the members of the audience were bringing up uh, political questions, but the main speakers were not taking us down that route. They were keeping us in the sort of economics of the market, all the uh, the win-win options of working with the private sector. Um, but what about when it's win-lose? What about when the people are being pushed out? Uh, do we have to then change the power uh, back in favour of people? Um, 
and that sometimes we have to have a different model of development which is not so friendly to big business. We didn't talk about that. Uh, that's a great speech uh, here today. Yeah. But tell tell about this experience to be here in Brazil to make part of this event and, and your work in Amazon. What, what do, do you like the country? <laughs> well, I, this is a very short visit for me, and I've been here a few times, and I've always loved the the, the spirit of the Brazilian people, and uh, so it's always a pleasure coming here because you know you are a very open-hearted people and uh, the English are maybe more cautious about their emotions <laughs> so I can say that frankly and so um, it's always very special for us coming here um, I mean I've been observing the Amazon from in an intimate way since the 1970s when I started coming to the Amazon and um, you know, I've seen some great tragedies. Um, I was kind of, as a young man, quite traumatized by what I saw on the frontier. I imagine. Um, it was quite traumatic, uh, shocking. Um, and of course, you know, one realized it's not just the local people who are the problem. It's, it's all the power structures in the world who are driving these markets, driving these new uh, pressures on the environment. So we have to look at it holistically and not in a judgmental way. But it's pretty, it's, it's, um, it's quite frightening for the Amazon, but it's quite frightening for the planet, what's happening. So it's a pleasure, but it's also tempered with a certain amount of uh, fear, really. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of things to do here in Brazil, and we appreciate uh, your help. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot for having me here. It's really yes. great. Thank you very much. And do you have uh, any site that people can can see and read about? Uh, oh yes. Uh, yes. I mean, we have a website which has a lot of information about all these issues we've been discussing today. I mean, from the point of view of human rights, but touching on all these issues uh, to some extent. So our organization is called the Forest People's Program. Okay. And um, you can just go on the, um, on the web, www.forestpeoples.org. Dot uh, org. Dot org. And we can and put it here. And that will get us, um, and you'll get plenty of information. And we'd love feedback. We'd love to have people's views, comments, and uh, criticisms as well. Sure, we're going to visit. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you very much okay. about the interview. Pleasure, Lucas. See you. Okay. Um abraço, pessoal. Tudo okay. de bom. Até a próxima.